This is a little different from my normal style, but hopefully you guys will like it. I went to New York City recently with Genetically Modified Skeptic, and we went to visit the world headquarters of Jehovah's Witnesses. He'll be releasing a video on his channel about it soon, so keep a lookout for that. But after that, we went around to cart witnesses on the streets of New York to talk to them about their beliefs. This is a documentary-style film about what happened. I hope you guys like it. Before we get into it, I just want to mention that there are a few really good ways to show your support. I consolidated all the ways on my website, telltaleatheist.com, so if you want to read blog articles I write, check out my retro game store, find out when I'm having meetups or conferences next, or any of that stuff, that's a pretty good central hub to find out. But if you do go there, you'll find links to my Patreon, which is one of the best ways to support me, my merchandise store, which is also really good, and my retro game store. You'll also find links to my Twitter and Facebook and all kinds of other stuff. Links to all that stuff are all in the description, so check it out. Also, give my retro game channel a look. I just launched it recently. I talk about all kinds of game-related subjects. I think it's pretty interesting, but I'm probably biased. Anyways, let's get into it. Hey guys, I'm Drew from Genetically Modified Skeptic. And I'm Telltale, and we're out here looking for some cart witnesses. We'll see what happens. I'm gonna tell them I'm a Jehovah's Witness to start off, and then I'm gonna reveal who I really am and see how they react. Say, hey guys, like, I'm a witness myself. I think that I should claim loose affiliation, not okay. direct I am currently. I think that they'll be more willing to talk about their doctrine and explain things more clearly if they don't realize that I am fully him. So maybe I should just say, I have some family members who are Jehovah's Witness. If, if their guard goes up, then they're going to shut down and not consent to talk to us. Ready? Really? Yeah. I'll just like, follow your lead. Remember, I'm just a friend, so. Okay. So we walk up to the first group, um, and I tried to talk to them just casually. They completely shut down. We're not interested in talking. Talk about it? No, not really. You can take a picture if you want or whatever, oh. but not really uh, interview anything like that. If you want interviews, you would just uh, record. You know, go to the website and they'll give you the uh, information about as far as anyone oh, no, asks questions about how it works. So. That's alright. No, you, no, you don't want to. Yeah. Okay. Alright. Just stop. They're not usually that skittish. They're usually interested in um, talking and bringing people in until they realize that you're an apostate and they shut down. We'll see if we can find some others. See what their reactions are. Yeah, hopefully. So the next step was to find more Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, to my surprise, I discovered when you need a Jehovah's Witness, they are nowhere to be found. But when you want to be left alone, they're everywhere. <laughs> so we wander around New York City for a little while, went to Grand Central Station, some other places. We come around the corner and we see this cart right there. I don't know about you, but my heart started racing, thinking about actually you going up and saying, I am an apostate. What do you think about that? At first, when we when we first entered this plan, we did not intend to tell them that I'm an apostate until the very end of the conversation. Right. When we realized they weren't going to converse with us, we decided to just come out guns blazing, tell them that I'm an apostate, and ask them what they think about that. I am. I, I was wondering if I could talk to you guys about like your other questions. Yeah, um, that, that does that if you go on JW.org specifically for that purpose. Uh, that's okay. I just wanted to tell you guys that I'm one of like, the biggest apostates in, uh, in the world. And just see what you guys thought about it or whatever. Yeah. Talk to the talk. No, we don't have to be on media. Okay, yeah. yeah, check it out. I have a 666 tattoo. After I left, I got it. Uh, I, I thought that was kind of cool. But. Okay. Okay. Oh, you guys. Good. Yeah, I'm good. That sucked. That really sucked. Uh, they completely shut down. They completely stopped talking. Um, Didn't make eye contact nope, anymore. No more eye contact. Wouldn't look at him. No. Wouldn't respond to me. Wouldn't anything. They just said, "We don't want to be on camera." You know that's typical. Yes, oh my god. I'm actually surprised they didn't physically turn around. I thought that's what was going to happen. They're not a cult, though. No, they're not. So, for real. <laughs> OK. 
Okay, an issue that I've recognized since is the fact that this cult mentality, the, the, the personality that they program into you is in you for life for the most part. It leads to you feeling lots of shame the moment you realize somebody is shunning you. It leads to a, a sense of, a kind of a timidness to your personality. And it was really, really difficult to go up to these people and tell them that I was an apostate and see how they were going to react. All right, so, hey guys, I'm disfellowshipped. I'm one of the biggest apostates in the world. I just wanted to see what you thought about it, like how you feel about apostates. Yeah, that's right. I just want to see how you guys feel about apostates. Yeah. Hey guys. I used to be a Jehovah's Witness and am no longer. I, I'm actually the biggest, one of the biggest apostate activists in the world. I was wondering what you guys think of the work I'm doing and stuff. Don't want to talk about it. Okay. Yeah, check it out. I got this tattoo after I left. It's 666. Mark it to be Thank you guys. I don't feel like there was enough confidence in that, but they have a way of shaming people. That shame is built into me from childhood. It's the best I could do. We talked to three of them. None of them would talk to us. They didn't turn around. I thought they would. Uh, they, they stared me in the eyes for some of that. If you wanted to know how Jehovah's Witnesses treat apostates, That's now it. you know. Now you know. I, I'm not gonna lie, I felt kind of bad about influencing you to speak to these people uh, when you had that built-in shame there. But it, it was interesting to see you go into something that was ingrained in you in childhood. It's not something that I've seen, you know, as we've hung out in the past. I'm an activist. I do this for a living. I'm used to this kind of stuff. But in the moment, staring at people who I knew were not going to talk to me and disrespected me and even feared me. It was really a difficult situation. And at that point, we didn't think we'd get any different type of reaction. Uh, actually thought about quitting at that point. We thought that was our last clip. And it turned out not to be, but it was still an interesting uh, repetition. Next, we went to Central Park and we, we found another group. We, like you said, we were pretty much done at that point, but we just happened across this group and we had been basically Jehovah's Witness hunting this whole time, and it, we couldn't pass up this fantastic situation. We walk up to the other group, told the woman that I was an apostate, or you told the woman that I was an apostate. My friend here is actually one of the biggest like apostate or ex-Jehovah's Witness activists out there. And, you wanna uh, talk to him? So, right you're, just... talk, you're gonna address your comments to him. Okay. Right here, he's on the bench. Right okay. Here. okay. Cool. Sure. Thank, Thank you. you. And she told us to talk to the other guy, who was an elder, so we walk over to him, and we had an interesting conversation with him. He said a lot of key things that I found fascinating. Did you, did you mention the word apostate? Apostate, We yeah. typically don't discuss uh, religion with apostates, so we would prefer you not film us. Yeah. That would okay. Be okay. Would you would be willing to talk about anything? Is it just religion you don't talk about, or? Um, well, I heard you mention the word apostate. Yeah. That That is a word that we're very cautious of. We typically do not discuss the Bible if someone okay, that's cool. claims to be an ex-witness that is an apostate. Sure. We don't mind helping ones return to Jehovah. We have a publication that is there to help someone return. Right. And, do you? Uh, Can I have one? Are you disfellowship? Yes. Okay. We'll I give am. you one, yes. Okay, yeah. sweet. Yeah. So you have zero attention of return. Okay. Well, I won't be giving this to you if you have zero attention of return. If you have a family, your family, yeah. maybe they're in the truth, they would yearn for mom, you to return, she yeah. would love for you to return. And what that if, takes um, humility on your part to right. accept the arrangement. What if we could show that we can bring more people back to the truth if we talk to them and, and don't show? Would it still be desirable to show? Yeah. Why? But because that's the arrangement. We're trying to honor the arrangement. We, we view being a part of the congregation as a privilege. It's not a right, it's right. a privilege. Right. And uh, uh, we welcome anyone, but if someone's in fellowship, 
they can they can attend our meetings. Yeah. You're not banned from our meetings. Right. You know. Which verse is it? I forget. Is, that talks about disfellowshipping or not even dining with a man. Is that in Matthew? First Corinthians. First Corinthians. Did you read the second letter to the Corinthians? Yeah. He came back. Where he came he back came and back. said, yeah. "Don't cause undue sorrow." Yes. Yeah. And I'm sure. How do you justify it? And I'm sure that when when you come back to Jehovah. Um, your mother, your friends, your family will absolutely welcome but and embrace the you. The Second Corinthians letter says, "Don't cause undue sorrow." Right. In other words, when he's back, don't make him feel bad for being. So gone. you do want to cause undue sorrow until they come back. We are honoring the arrangement until they come back, and then when they come back, so you do want to cause undue sorrow until they come back. Uh, we don't use that term, undue sorrow. The Bible uses that term. I'm an elder in the congregation, and I'm. In talking to you, you yep. use the term, I'm being very guarded. Sure. But I'm willing to help you realize that if you want to come back to Jehovah, you can. You just have to go through the steps. Right. One, stop act, being an activist, campaigning or hurting. Yeah. And number two, humility, come recognize, sit in the congregation and realize the privilege to be in the congregation, what to have truth, and then make arrangements with the elders right. to help you. Let's say that I, I don't have any issue with the teachings. Uh, say I, I still believe all of it. I just am not a huge fan of how the governing body does things or whatever else. And that's what I'm campaigning against, quote unquote. With that, maybe I feel like they're out of line with Jehovah's arrangement. Maybe Jehovah, um, maybe they've lost his favor. That's where you have to be very careful because now you're speaking out against an arrangement maybe you're not fully familiar with as far as they're being anointed and they're being sure. uh, used by Jehovah. There are some issues that people talk about. Well, that's what I won't, I won't discuss those with you. I will not have someone right, uh, okay. give me a negative view okay. of the governing body. So I'm not going to throw the system. negatives out yeah. there. I'm sure you probably heard them anyway. I'm not going to bother. No, I won't discuss them. Okay. Yeah. I know the Mormon church has had a few issues with this thing and that thing. I'm sure you've heard. I have talked to Mormons that before, here. yeah. Um, if they were, and they have been told, not to talk to people who disagree with them because the organization, the Mormon church, doesn't want people hearing outside information about what the Mormon church is doing. Uh, how can those people, the Mormons, determine or figure out if it's doing something that's not good uh, without asking questions? I can't speak for them. I have, I, I'm not going to talk about that. Yeah. And I won't discuss the faithful slave. There are a lot of ways in which um, your personality is kind of built up in a very specific way to, right? I mean, they, they try to get you to be uh, the way that, uh, they, you know, they see Jehovah would want you to be. Yeah, the, the Christian personality, the new personality. Yeah. Is well. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that, that sticks in you for life, pretty much. Yeah. Um, so I don't want you to think, I, I really, to this day, do not like confrontation yeah. or being in people's faces or yelling or anything. We got some interesting conversation out of him, surprisingly. Yeah. Uh, he talked about the Christian personality that they put on. I, I mentioned that there's behavior modification uh, to make people more like what God would want them to be like, which is the sign of a cult. And he acknowledged, yes, that's called the Christian personality. You did a little bit of street epistemology on him at one point. What was your take on that? I just wanted to figure out whether or not he would openly admit, like he had with admitting that he had basically been programmed with a specific personality, that there was absolutely nothing that could possibly convince him, even hypothetically, that the Jehovah's Witnesses were not the right group to be a part of, that the Watchtower Society was, was corrupt or, or fallible. He ended up telling us repeatedly that there's absolutely nothing that could possibly change his mind about anything that he believes in in relation to the Watchtower Society or to Jehovah. Would there be any possible way or like method of reasoning or line of evidence that could ever convince you that basically being a part of the Watchtower Society or being a Jehovah's Witness is not the way to go, is not the right thing? I won't hear that. No, we'll not discuss it. Because okay. I know the ring of truth. The fundamental major differences between uh, false religion and Bible truth. 
very clear. And those are clear to me. And we will not entertain uh, reasons why Watchtower, reasons why Jehovah's Witnesses are not true. We won't entertain that. Like if I said I'll never entertain or discuss anything that goes against what I believe, would it be possible to convince me that Jehovah's Witnesses, like, I should, I should join? That, that's opening your Bible and seeing what the Bible really says. That's our message. It's not, it's not criticizing one's faith. We simply open the Bible. What does the Bible really say? It's very clear on the Godhead, on the immortal soul, God's purpose, the kingdom. Um, Trinity, hell. All those things, yeah. And this gentleman knows. Yeah. So does that mean that if I presented a different narrative or a different like set of ideas or biblical interpretation um, than like what you believe, that means that it's not negative and it's not going against what? Like, no, no. It, 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 as long as what you're having to say doesn't criticize our faith. We don't criticize... I told him that I will change my mind with evidence that I'm open to that and he basically ended up saying, yeah, that's good for you. You should be that way. I should not be that way because I'm right and so the rules are different for me. I think that's total hypocrisy and I won't act that way myself, but it was interesting to hear him admit that openly. I think that's actually called the special pleading logical fallacy. Maybe. I'm glad that he spoke to us. Yeah, come uh, back to Jehovah. Thank you for speaking. If, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you don't hurt or try to attack, Try to be vengeful. I don't hate anybody, especially not yeah. Jehovah. And don't use the word apostate. That's a, that's not a good word. I am an apostate. Um, well, then we'll yeah. probably end our discussion then. I do care about Jehovah's Witnesses a great deal. They can I, come back. It's hard. They can care come about, back. I care about Jehovah's Witnesses, not the yeah. Watchtower Society. Uh, but I I'm glad that you spoke to me. So okay. Thank you. For Have a good day. Thank you very much. Gentlemen. Yeah. See you later. All right. As the conversation came to a close, he was actually a lot more open than I expected him to be. Definitely. Now, there were some subjects that he absolutely refused to cover. He refused to go there with, with a few things like um, possible watchtower abuses. Now, I, I didn't even get into it with him because I knew he wasn't going to want to. But he made it clear that he kind of wanted to end the conversation like five different times. Right. Um, but he continued talking with us. So uh, by the end of it, I, I, I was honestly surprised he talked to us at all. I was even more surprised that I offered my hand and he shook it. Um, a lot of the time, not only will they not even look at you, they will they certainly not shake your hand. Uh, so that's pretty much how the experience went. I actually felt really, really good about that elder talking to us by the end of it. It was a fascinating conversation. Overall, the day started pretty rough. Uh, it was not fun having to face these people and, and, and face all of this stuff that they put me through from day one. I'm sorry, by the way. It was an unpleasant day in many ways, especially at the beginning. But being an activist sometimes is an unpleasant job. But I know that my work helps people because I hear it from them every day. And in the end, just knowing that it helps people makes it all worth it.